Well, we have another special guest with us today, another author with a book coming out. We've got Michael Sadowski, all the way from Toronto. Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the Photobug podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, to be we're here. delighted to have you. And I thought maybe we'll start out by just giving a little bit about yourself and uh, your photography background. Um, well, um, I'm born and raised in uh, Toronto, Canada. Um, live here to this day. Uh, I started photography, uh, I would say like eight, nine years ago. Started really taking it seriously in like 2015. Um, bought my first camera. Um, started just walking around the streets of Toronto doing street photography and architecture stuff, learning, like learning the ways, right? Um, I really fell in love with it. Um, I worked at it every single day and I got to the point where, you know, people started to recognize my work and I was offered, um, you know, jobs like my first gigs and eventually made enough um, to support myself on it and quit my job and just became a photographer. <laughs> and then, you know, I've just kind of grown that little business into, um, you know, what, what I have here today. and. I don't intend on stopping anytime soon. Oh, good. And I'm sure most of our viewers will know it's not easy making a living as a photographer. And you have a book coming up here uh, uh, yeah, yeah. with this month? Uh, yep, October 10th. It'll be in stores. It's uh, available online for pre-order uh, right now. And can you give a little bit of background and the title of the book? Uh, so it's called Wonder uh, Around Every Corner, and it's uh, you know it's a, it's a photo book, coffee coffee table photo book um, of some of my best photos created over the years, um, mostly just travel related um, cityscapes, streetscapes, and landscapes that I've shot, um, and yeah, and uh, it's. You know, although my my work is always kind of evolving and, and moving to like different styles and places, this this book kind of like represents to me like my early works in a way. So. Well, good, and that's I assume will be available on Amazon and all the major booksellers. Yes, they are. And do you have a website by chance? I know we're I connected on Instagram. Yeah. Um, well, all the links for everything are, are in my bio of my Instagram, mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, www.mindseyephotography.com. Okay, good. And we're going to put that down here and share it with everybody. And uh, so I want to talk a little bit about your photography. You've done commercial photography and uh, travel photography, is that correct? Yes. Um, you know, I've worked with some um, some brands like you know, um, Sony, uh, Ford, Lincoln, uh, Hilton Hotels, uh, I guess, for like the uh, more of the commercial side, um, and then tr travel and tourism boards is like most of the work that I do. And is the uh, image behind you there, is that one of your photos? It, it is. <laughs> that's that's um, just a new piece I, I created uh, here in Toronto uh, a few weeks ago, well, maybe a couple of months ago now. And you have um, a very interesting style, which I really uh, enjoyed looking through your Instagram images. Thank you. You want? Yeah, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, it's all right. I was going to give you a few minutes to talk about the style, uh, how you developed that, and don't give away any secrets. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, um, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's like when I first started, you know, creating my own art, I, it didn't come from, you know, like <laughs> it kind of came from just like inside, right? Like, like I didn't really know what I was doing technically. I just kind of just threw up on the canvas in a way, right? Like, so whatever amounts of contrast or whatever colors um, I ended up with, like in each image I didn't really understand why I was creating them that way it just kind of happened and um, I think a lot of it is subconscious uh, my grandfather was a, uh, a landscape oil painter mm -hmm. and 
his paintings were like all over my my home and my uncle's homes and my grandparents' homes, right? Like everywhere growing up. So a lot of his art like seeped into me at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward many, many years later when I'm starting to create my own art, it's like I was kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess like influenced by, by his work so much that it started looking like his, like painterly feeling, um, kind of dark, dramatic, um, you know, like like kind of like low lit scenes. Yeah, it was kind of sharp here and there. Kind, um, kind of photography that's, that's, noir. You're right. It struck me when I saw those. Yes. I said he really likes these um, more darkly lit scenes, with but there's there's lighting from the the structures and and uh, surrounding. Um, well, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Um, arch architectural items Arch yeah. that are around where you're focusing so and I said it's like kind of a photography noir yeah so it is in, in some ways like a photography noir with the shadows and and really what somebody like say Jim or I might try to do in black and white you're you're getting that achievement in color which is really kind of unique and and interesting yeah, it's a very interesting and distinct style that I uh, really enjoyed watching or looking at your images yes and encourage other people to go out there and perhaps follow you on Instagram as well Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's 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 so much that goes into it though. It's like um, you know over the years you kind of learn what you want and you you learn what you don't want, um, and then you start really dialing into that certain style um, and then realizing other influences that that you may have had and didn't know about, like movies you you've seen 20 years ago that mm -hmm. kind of, like scenes that kind of stuck with you in your mind, um, and then you st when you recognize that you could start really implementing that into your work as well so it's kind of this snowball effect that started at zero and, mm -hmm. and it builds up into something would you mind talking a little bit about your technique uh, how you go by achieving the uh, the look that you have um well it's you know it all starts it all starts in the camera right um, mm -hmm. so showing up to certain places at certain times um you know the often result it often needs like scouting uh, ahead of time to kind of study the way I guess like light works and, and the way the artificial lighting is going to be and then also I like my scenes like almost empty I do like a lone single person in there mm -hmm. um, or a couple just some sort of story um, human story um, so yeah like just, just starting off with scouting seeing if it'll work for, for like the final vision of the piece mm -hmm. um, and then you know, obviously capturing it in the right way, which sometimes means uh, multiple files like exposure brackets or focus stacks. Um, I like all my work to be like in focus front to back. Not, I don't really use like shallow depth of field uh, too often. Um, so sometimes that requires me stitching photos together that were focused at different points. Right. It depends on like what lens I'm using and how, like how low to the foreground I am, how where my elements are, I guess. Um, so that, so just yeah, capturing the file or the files um, properly, um, the way, what I feel is proper, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, I take them all into Lightroom at first because uh, I really love the catalog system and just easy raw file processing. Um, find the file or files I need and then I bring them into Photoshop and either blend them together um, first or just dig into you know focusing uh, first off like focusing the viewer's eye to where I want it to go mm -hmm. so if there's like a laneway like in this photo behind me mm -hmm. if you can see it um, you know there's a laneway and there's this this guy walking down right and right. but when I shot this file, like some of the other sides were kind of brighter than the middle, so I would have, but I wanted the viewer side to go like down that lane, right? So it requires like dodging and burning, which I prefer to do in Photoshop, just to kind of take your eye away from like this corner and bring it to like this corner, let's say. Um, and then, yeah, like color work, like removing certain colors that I feel like don't 
fit the palette and enhancing other colors that I, I really want to stand out. Um, so I'm assuming you, you kind of pre-visualize the uh, image that you want. Uh, nowadays I do that a lot more. The past few, few years I've, I've kind of uh, been able to pre-visualize it. Mm -hmm. and, and by using Photoshop more, you kind of have to yep. uh, know like what the final image is going to look like. Because Photoshop is like a very uh, destructive program. Mm -hmm. um, like Lightroom, you can just move sliders back and or delete yes. adjustment like, at any time, right? Um, but Photoshop, like a certain adjustment that you might not like could be like 10 layers deep in your layer stack. And then if you want to remove that, you might not be able to because you already have like an image layer that includes it higher up. So you kind of have to commit to everything that you do. Um, on the layers, do you use the uh, the modes like lighten or anything like that to uh, bring in lower layers? Um, it, it really depends. Um, I use a lot of, uh, you know, it's just hue saturation layer uh, adjustment layers, a lot of curve adjustment layers. Mm -hmm. I use curves for a lot of a lot of adjustments mm -hmm. uh, for dodging and burning, for adding colors, uh, you know, and then some global curve adjustment sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, in Photoshop, I really only use like a handful of tools, but I use them in like different ways mm -hmm. over and over, um, uh, in combination with like layer masks and selection. Something else that we have uh, started asking photographers probably within the last two three months, and that's AI, <laughs> because it seems to have uh, quite an impact on photography and. Uh, stock photographers in particular are seeing their sales drop dramatically. Have you seen, or let's just give you your thoughts on AI. Um, well, it's an advancement. You know, they're, they're, they're never going to stop coming, right? <laughs> um, there's always going to be a, a quicker, easier, more technological way to do something mm -hmm. that's already been done. Um, I mean, we saw that, like, you know, in the stock photo industry when it changed from, you know, film photographers over to digital, right? right? Um, you know, it, it reduced the value of a stock image mm -hmm. dramatic, right? Um, and, and now it's doing it again. But I, I feel like it, it depends on like what, what you're trying to do as a photographer, that it, that it would really impact you or it wouldn't. Um, like my, the art I create, like, first of all, I, I love the entire process. It gets me out seeing the world, um, you know, really like, like if I have a vision or an idea for a piece, it involves me, you know, planning it, like going to the location. And then there's always a chance it, it won't happen. Like the moment that I'm looking for, it just doesn't happen. Um, sometimes I have to like go revisit a few times over the course of years. But then when you finally get it, like that's very, very satisfying, you know? And when you finally create, you know, the final piece, it just feels like you've worked so hard for it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't see myself just creating that same piece with AI and, and feeling that same sense of enjoyment, mm -hmm. right? So, so for me personally, I, I don't know, I'm in photography because of, I guess, the experience of it. Um, right. Not just to, to create these images in any way possible. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's gonna affect some parts like of the industry, um, but then in some ways it, it won't affect other parts. I mean, um, I mean, there's still gonna be sports photography, there's still gonna be wedding photography. Um, you know, like I feel like there is, there might be a newfound appreciation for landscape photography and like actual, um, actual photography <laughs> um, like in a world like filled with like a trillion AI images and you see a real photograph from like a very talented you know artist right. you might have more appreciation for that now because that was, was crafted like the old school way or, or the traditional way so yeah I like the way you're going to get it real photography versus artificial photography <laughs> maybe that's what we should <laughs> get a, a yeah. classification there yeah just, I just I I don't really feel like threatened by it because um, I, I know I know 
what I get out of this, and it's mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 the love for it. So uh, I don't think the existence of people making similar looking images in a different way is going to change that. Right. Well, that sounds great. And again, we really love your style. I'm going to go back to the uh, picture that you have uh, there in again behind you because it's so representational of the work that I've seen from you. Um, can you give us some idea? You said you, you stack these uh, in uh, Photoshop. How many uh, layers do you generally have when you're, uh, is there any particular number? It, again, it, it, it depends. So this one back here um, was, um, I guess I think I, from memory, I used two brackets, um, like a base exposure mm -hmm. and then one shot like an instant after um, about like two and a half stops darker just because uh, there's highlights like on the edge of like that inner building mm -hmm. that like you never really know like kind of know but I had a feeling like maybe they'd be they might be a little bit blown out and then when I get home I, I'd have no details there so I always make sure to kind of bracket exposure um, and then I, um, I actually used a model um, for the person there. Mm. And so I have another shot of him like walking through, which I use. So this is from a water treatment plant in Toronto. Mm. And um, you know, that location at like 3.30 in the morning, oh, you know, and they want to walk through it. But also at like, you know, in the evening, um, even like the early morning, it's still dusk, like, right. like six, seven, like that's filled with cars and, and workers and stuff. So to get it looking the way it does right now, you kind of have to, um, you know, go very late. And then well, you answered my next question because I know Toronto is a very busy city. I've uh, been in Toronto many times and, uh, well, any city of course is, and to get that with no people and no cars and transportation must be a challenge <laughs> I mean yeah it, um, well getting Toronto without orange cones on the street is probably the biggest challenge <laughs> that's anywhere now <laughs> yeah. in fact when I was in uh, uh, Newfoundland especially in St. John's the whole St. John's the whole major part of the city is being they're tearing up the streets and it was nothing mm -hmm. but construction cones and barrels and well, okay, so, so every, every image is different. Every location is different at any given time, right? Mm -hmm. um, most often, I shoot very early in the morning. Um, so a lot of, like, the night photos you've seen for me are in between, like, 3 a.m., 2 a.m. till the morning. It's like in the evening, sometimes I just don't bother. There's, there's too much, like, nightlife and... And, and traffic going on. So like once everyone goes to sleep, that's probably the best time um, to get things looking minimal, right? Um, um, there, but there are times where, you know, you, you're traveling somewhere, you have a request for a client to get, you know, this, this city view um, from like this particular angle. And it could be night, it could be sunrise, um, but, uh, they don't want anybody in it at all, mm. right? And, and you might have one day to do it. So you, you're flying somewhere in Europe, and you have one day, and you show up, and it's just there's a street festival that okay. night. So it's complete <laughs> mess, right? And so that's when you start as like, you know, as, as a photographer, like you kind of have to think on your feet, like, okay, how am I going to achieve this, right? Um, so that's where, you know, shooting lots and lots of photos and using layers uh, in Photoshop to blend them together. Like that's where really, that's where that becomes really valuable. So like there's this one, um, there's one time where I, where I was tasked to do this and I, uh, you know, I, I just shot, anytime someone like cleared from like a, a portion of the street. I said you could people. remove them and later? Yeah, so then I was just kind of taking photos of empty spaces, not of, well, and then I had enough empty spaces in the end 
to kind of just remove everybody. Right. And then you could also do like very, very long exposures and just kind of like as people are walking. And people like, disappear. Yeah, they disappear. But they leave a little bit of a trace sometimes. A and ghost. <laughs> just don't move for five minutes and you realize that after that. <laughs> yes. So, so it's not, that's not like the perfect way to do it, but yeah. Um, I've done that myself, so I understand that. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, too, something else we always ask our photographers. If um, advice that you would give to a new photographer just starting out. Uh, it's always tough. Um, I guess uh, just, just explore explore yourself. You know, there's a reason why you got in photography, right? Mm -hmm. Something brought you here, right? Um so just really like lean into whatever that was and, and try not to get too distracted by trends you might see or what you know the most popular people are doing at any given moment. Those are always gonna change. And you know, you really wanna find your voice as an artist. And I feel like if, if you just follow what everyone else is doing, you'll never really find it. So so I would just I would just say like just do what you love and like trust your gut on it and learn I guess as much as you possibly can of technically uh, technically speaking mm -hmm. everything about your gear everything about like any software you're gonna use um, you know just just never stop learning right because that kind of stuff's always going to keep advancing as well um, yeah and just just follow your heart you know it brought you here in the first place so just <laughs> we'll keep it moving in that direction I think that's great advice. Yeah. Fred, really. do you have any questions for Michael or comments? Uh, do you have any big projects coming up, or are you just still kind of freestyling a little bit? Uh, there's always a few things kind of like on my radar. Like, <laughs> it, it's the industry, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, um, you know, if you don't have it like set in stone in a contract, then it's still, there's a good chance it might not happen. So I'm in talks with you know, with clients for a few potential jobs next year, but I can't really say if it's mm -hmm. going to happen yet or not. Mm -hmm. uh, Fingers crossed, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, but I guess on the art side, um, I'm um, in, in talks with a few gallery um, in um, Dubai, in Milan, um, possibly London for exhibits um, next year. Um, so I'm, I'm getting kind of like a portfolio of work ready for those. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's been a really busy summer. So this is kind of like the tail end of that where I can finally relax a little bit, maybe uh, focus on my personal work a little bit more um, and just create. And you'll have to let me know if you do get the uh, gallery in London. I'm going to be in London in probably mid to late March. So... Okay. Yeah. Right. So one more time, I want you to give um, the title of your book is coming up, and you said that's on the tenth, right? And this is uh, where he reaches back into the ether. October. Yeah. Oh, oh it's the, not really displaying. Yeah, the okay. book just just appeared. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the vanishing book. <laughs> yeah, I totally I forgot about that. That's uh, all right. <laughs> Good it's zoom. Wonder around every corner. Um, it's called Wonder Around Every Corner. Um, It'll be in, um, as far as I know, Barnes and Noble in the United States. Amazon, uh, I assume. Am yes, it's on, it's on Amazon. Uh, Indigo and Chapters in Canada, um, and on the uh, Trope uh, Publisher uh, Trope Publishing website. Oh, good. Okay. And, um, I'll, I can provide all the links for that. Good, and we're going to put that down here. And one more time, your website. Uh, it's www. Mind's eye photography.com. Yep, and again, we want to encourage everybody to go out there and keep an eye out on that book and maybe on the London galleries next year. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Thank Sounds please good. do. Well, Michael, I sure do appreciate your time. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to add before we uh, end the uh, interview here? Uh, no, I mean, I. Good. Was, I really enjoyed talking to you guys, so thanks again for having me. Um, and um, yeah, um, I'll be following up with your podcast on uh, on YouTube the next few months. And Sounds good. Look, seeing what you guys make. 
good. Uh, yeah, we, we have another viewer. It makes two, I think. No, three. <laughs> three. Oh, three. three viewers. Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Mm. Bye, guys.